Good afternoon and welcome to Portal TV and this is SciTech episode number 17. I'm Tim. I'm Joanne. And we're going to jump right into my first story here. Uh, if you haven't heard about it or you didn't know by now, I am a diehard space cadet. Always have been since my, my youth. And one of the biggest influences on me... Um, hold on one second. I think I have something else running here. Let me make sure I have my system running properly. I've heard some echo there for a minute because uh, I don't want you to hear the echo. Anyway, one of the biggest influence was a Gerard K. O'Neill who wrote a book called The High Frontier. And I have my copy of it for you to see. This is the original that I had when I was uh, 16. Still in great shape. But basically what he talked about was the colonization of near Earth and going out into the solar system. And at the time, everyone was very excited because we just finished with the Apollo missions and we were looking at the space shuttle to bring us cheap and inexpensive entry into low Earth orbit, and that just didn't happen. And a lot of it was, unfortunately, uh, political uh, wrangling. Uh, in fact, the last space shuttle commander said it most eloquently. They've been promising us Mars in the next 20 years for the last 40. What can you do about it? But there's a wonderful piece of software out there from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory called Eyes on the Solar System. And I want to show you that for just a moment for those of us who are also like space cadets. And let me get into it real quick. As you can see here, you have eyes on Earth. And this shows you all the information. I'm not going to get into that one, but this shows you all the information about the near-Earth satellites that monitor and take a look at what's going on on Earth. You know, weather patterns, uh, mineralogy, um, ice cap loss, uh, uh, sea levels, you name it. Everything's right there. But I really, really like eyes on the solar system. And their new one, eyes on exoplanets. But here's what's really cool about eyes on the solar system. And let me bring it up here very quickly. Now, just as if you were in World of Warcraft, you can move the solar system, turn it, just by grabbing your mouse, and you can zoom in and out of it in exactly the same way. But here's what's really cool about this. NASA and JPL, JPL have made sure that all the positions of everything Every planet, our alignment with the galactic lens, everything is exactly where it's supposed to be real time. So what we're seeing is our a live image of our solar system represented with this computer model, which is really cool. And if we zoom way out, you can see how far away Voyager 1 is now from Earth. And she's way out here, but here's, here's where it gets really cool. I can double click on this. And it zooms right in on Voyager, and here's the entire craft. And again, I can zoom in on it, I can zoom out of it, and we can rotate around it just as you see. Now, if I go back to home, it'll take me right back to the solar system. Here's the part I really loved. If you zoom into Earth, you see all of Earth represented where the clouds really are, and where every single one of the satellites around the planet are. And if we look at it, let me look at the, here's the ISS, okay? Let me zoom in a little bit, and you can actually see the movement of it against the Earth. And let's see her moving down there. If I double click on her, we zoom right in on the ISS space station. And this is what it looks like from the edge of the Earth. I can back out, go to any one of the other space solar systems. By, I say solar systems, any other planetary systems. For instance, Saturn has a quite populous planetary system. This is a wonderful tool. You know, if you have children or you're just a space cadet, uh, you name it, it's a wonderful tool for them, for yourself. Here's Saturn. Double click on it. Takes a moment to refresh, and there it is in all its glory. And I can zoom out of that and see its entire planetary system. You can see all the moons around Saturn here. Now let's take a look at one of our, uh, here's, take a look at Titan. Now one thing we can't do yet is land on the surface of these, which would be really cool if we could ever do that. Uh, one of the reasons for that, of course, is we don't have enough topographical information about everything, but um, 
I can see that happening in the future. In fact, if we do this with Mars, we can actually zoom in on Curiosity down on the surface of the planet. So they are trying, whoops, let me click on that again, there we go. And there she is. I, I think it'd be cool if they could also show us the path. You know, you can zip around and look at her. And you can also see all the other orbital attributes to that too. So bottom line is if you love space like I do and you really want to take a trip through the solar system and you can click on any one of these items down here once you've gone on and get more multimedia data on anything you're looking at, eyes on the solar system are fantastic, is fantastic. So be sure to check it out. Uh, look it up. I love it. I'm sure you will too. All right. So we're going to zip over to Joanne here in just a second. And that's a go ahead. That's a really interesting um, story, actually, because actually I really want to see the planet, the Kepler. Do you remember the one that was found in the Goldilocks zone? Yep. Um, that is like pretty much the closest size to Earth. Exactly. Um, I would love to get you know uh, a closer look at that. But and you clearly, can do that with this because they update the database pretty quickly. And that other segment, which is the exoplanets, you can yeah. zoom in on it. They have a nice feature, too, where they will show you a ring of the habitable area around every star that you look at. Now, there may not oh. be a planet in it, but you can see it. And it's really cool based on the different mm -hmm. types of stars and et cetera. So, yeah, that, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. No, but what I mean is I would love to get a closer look at that planet, you know, like... <laughs> Zoom in and, you know, be able to, for us to land something on that planet. That well, would be awesome. Two days ago, NASA had a conference about investing more money in looking at that exact planet you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're still in the preliminary stages of it. They put in the budgetary stuff to uh, get approval, and it looks like they're going to get it. So they will study that one a little closer in, oh, in that's most awesome. pro pro probability. Well, uh, just in case, I mean, not in case, but after we drain all the resources of this planet, <laughs> we shall uh, go and uh, take over, hostile take over the other one. <laughs> there you go. I hope uh, not. Um, but uh, on to my story. This okay. one I found was interesting. Uh, it's titled, Was Steve Jobs a Jerk? Uh, hiring Case Questions His Character. I mean, I, I really don't know much about the guy. I don't purchase too much Apple stuff. I just have the iPhone, so I don't really care. But um, the workers have a uh, have a very big complaint. So basically, the tech workers are suing over an alleged. This is all alleged, but you know, could be true. Um, no poaching, which is stealing agreement among Silicon Valley firms. Uh, basically, um, the defendants. So the plaintiffs are the. Um, other workers, um, the, de the defendants are, I mean, they want to ban evidence that might make Steve Jobs look like a bad guy. And it's important because uh, it, um, it centers around the alleged secret agreements uh, case or uh, struck among the companies including giants like Apple, Google, and Adobe. And basically they have this policy in place or something that's uh, where they cannot hire each other's workers. So when they do that, it drives down the workers' wages and it also restricts where they go. So if they work for Apple, I'm guessing they can't just go and work for Google or Adobe. And that really sucks. Um, because if you're in that industry, those would probably be the go-to places that you'd want to um, head, head up hit up next. Um, and that's very unfair if that's true to the workers because, uh, you know, it seems that, like, you know, those big three companies might be talking about and talking amongst themselves about such things and that is incredibly um, uh, unfair to the workers. So in Isaacson's biography, uh, the best-selling biography about uh, where he talks about Steve Jobs as both a good guy and a bad guy and basically um, what this biography is doing is um, there are some statements in there that the uh, plaintiffs are using as evidence in the trial. However, the defendants, which you know are the uh, big wigs, they want to um, ban that evidence, which is kind of messed up, you know, because it's like, well, uh, it's it's kind of it's happened already, so 
you know, why would you want to do this except to save a lot of money? And it is quite a bit of money, but split among the workers. I believe the workers are seeking three billion U.S. dollars in damages in the case, but and the trial will go um, in late May. Go on in late May, but three billion is a lot of money, but split among I don't know how many workers work for Apple uh, that that's probably not that much um, and also let's see there's also oh there's a quote I believe from Jobs that that said and he said this to the Google co-founder Sergey Brin is if you hire a single one of these people that means war but then you know maybe he could have said it jokingly too you know what I mean but um like that kind of just uh, lends as further evidence to the alleged, you know, secret agreement. Um, and um, basically, that's that's it. So, what do you guys have to say about the story? Okay, our fee just jumped to four hundred. I'm not sure, Tim. You want to well, take a look at that? Take a look at that real quick. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I have no problem with it jumping to 400, but, but. <laughs> I don't think it's accurate, unfortunately. Let me, I didn't even have a uh, page up for my site. Let me do that real quick. All right. Do, do, do. Uh, Let me see. refresh this real quick. Uh, uh, Anonymous see. Loot said hello. Why, hello there. Hello, Loot. How are you today? Uh, and then as soon as we have up to 400, you know, the, the medium low and high, the, uh, uh, the what's the word, uh, the graphics bar is back up again. I think, you know, I think it might be automatic if you attain that for a while, you all might automatically get your partnership. But well, we, we do. don't want to do, uh, just a okay. guess, just a guess. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, please don't um, bot us. Bought us with a lot of viewers, right? I mean, viewers. We appreciate the ideal, but it doesn't really help us. In fact, it, it could get us in trouble. Us. They get us in trouble. Thank you. I feel like as long as we do say this, like uh, Twitch can can see it. You know what I mean? Exactly. And be like, okay, well. Yeah, we only have it, one, yeah. two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight, nine people in our chat. So okay, yeah. we certainly don't have no three hundred and forty-nine. And the problem is if that stays on for more than two or three minutes I have to log out to try and kill the bot mm -hmm. and then log back in which means we well, have you to gotta to log out anyway so we can start the game that is correct so I might as well do that right now so folks okay. uh, hang in there we will be back in just a few moments and we will start what are we playing today Joanne um, I thought we we're still playing uh, World of Warcraft right? you haven't told me anything <laughs> no no that, we'll still play World of Warcraft I was just testing the water there Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll be right back, folks. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Oh, it's back down to uh, five, so that's good.